everyone, welcome back to the BBTV channel. We are here with another UFC 5 Universe Mode episode. We are going to be doing the Notorious MMA 3, I believe. Yep, the Notorious MMA 3. And we have a massive main event for you guys tonight. But before that, for all of that, we have a huge opener as we're going to see Raul Rojas Jr. in the men's benway division 1 and 3 in the red trunks take on Yiro Watanabe in the black trunks. And that is going to kick it off in the men's Bantam weight division. As you guys know, the rules for... Uh, oh, that nice little upgrade. But I, you guys know the rules for um, Notorious MMA. And that is we go all out, knockout only, stand up and bang. No going to the ground. Go to the ground, you got to get back up. You will get knocked out or we go to a judge's decision in every fight. Here we go. Both fighters are doing some decent damage to each other, but nothing too crazy. They're both guys keeping their distance. Can't say I blame them. Come on, you gotta do something. I can try to get everything where I need it too, just in case. That was a nice hook. I said both fighters just kind of patiently waiting. A bit of a weird start. We know Raul Ross Jr. likes to get down and dirty with him. And we're just not really seeing that from him. Nice head kick. Some scarring there on the face. That's, a, that's an open cut. Oh, oh, he rocked him. Watanabe rocked him good. I said, Rural Russia not having the greatest run so far in his UFC career. Uh, one in three. And you got to think, once you start facing other debuting guys, you know, is that, it's, I think a lot of people feel like, oh, that person's history. You know, they're on their way out, but don't sleep on Raul Ross. So they said we've seen just small and subtle moments of some big of of of, of uh, high intensity from uh, Yuri Watanabe, but me all oh, nice caught him there, and Watanabe's been patient. Rojas went down. Oh, that was a front kick that actually did some mat nasty damage. Ra Ross trying to survive this round. It looks like now he's been pretty messed up. And that's just some of the action. Going to round number two. And it's very easy to. Uh oh, that leg may have uh, gotten a bit stiff. For Raul, it's not really going well from there's a bit of a malfunction at the junction, if you will. I so said, let's see, but these guys keep trying to keep space. And you can see that Watsonabe is being very patient. And it's worked out well for him, that's for sure. My goodness. I'm just kind of surprised, like, the spacing. And you can see that Raul doesn't want to, you know, throw himself. Oh, 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 oh. But he's getting caught. And it's mainly because Watsonabe is kind of forcing Rojas to, to counter jab. Oh, that head kick was nasty. I think one more big shot. Oh, the leg, the leg. And Wadnabi Rose too, that, that lead leg of Ro Rojas is it's it's bad. It's not really it's not doing well. You gotta think this is not it's not the first time that you know that, that leg has kind of snapped the way it has. And you've gotta think how much pressure is he putting on that leg any, anymore? Is there any like you know ooh, ooh 
that's getting worse and worse. And the worst part is he's not defending. Them. He's not checking these leg kicks. Oh, oh, it's over. It's over. Good night, Raul Rojas Jr. Hero Watsonabe successful in his martial art. Oh, in his debut. Got him right in the mouth. Goodness gracious. Congrats to Jiro Watsonabe. One to know, one to know, I guess, in the, in the UFC technically. As he puts Raul Ross Jr. to one and four. It's getting worse and worse for uh, Raul. <laughs> anyway, next up, folks. We go into another fighter making their debut. And they're in, I guess, their UFC slash Taurus MMA partnership. You ready to fight? Are you ready to fight? As we head to the women's flyweight division. The 4 and 5 Vivian Arujo in the red takes on the newcomer in the black trunks, Alexa Burrell. Nice head kick. Both these fighters are jiu jitsu specialists. This should be interesting. Oh! What, what I liked from Arujo, though, she didn't give up on that combination. She knew she rocked her. She knew she was going to block, but she still kind of kept going with that combination. Now, granted, maybe one of those shots probably ate through the block, but that right there, I, I like that. Nice front kick. I like how Bureau's not afraid to kind of stand with her either. Oh. Did that last fight. Oh, one four. Yeah. One and oh, perfect. We're looking at the women's flyweight division needing needing a much needed breath of fresh air and. With a whole, hopefully a whole bunch of newcomers coming to this will be what the, the division needs. Oh, right down goes Bureau, but she's... Oh, wait a minute. I don't know if that was legal. I don't know how legal that was officially. I mean, she was still getting up. I mean, I guess technically she was standing, but... She should have gave her at least a second to get back up. It's becoming like a kickboxing match, if anything. Oh! I take it back. That was a stiff elbow to the face. So both fighters doing a great job blocking. Oh, nice. Up. Well, I think well one hit with the hook. They wouldn't hit with an uppercut. You can tell Arua's always looking for that knockout shot. You, you can just tell. She's always looking to finish. But my thing is, as she keeps trying to go for the, that overhand, right? How? How is that going to affect... Like, has she given that away? Because I mean, she's missed, I think, two or three times now. So, knowing that that may be a shot that she's specifically looking for... How is her corner going to tell her? They're going to like you know explain her how to mask it because if I'm Bureau, that 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 that, that shot that she's trying to do, I'm going to have a mental note of that. And it's always when she's looking to do some big damage, that shot comes out. So it's gonna be interesting. Oh oh, nice uppercut. That was another one. Oh oh, down goes Bureau. She's back up though. She's back up. I'm just kind of intrigued that both these two fighters come in with similar techniques, nice jiu-jitsu backgrounds. Okay, okay. Beautiful front kick, but she didn't get all of it. Oh! 
One of those shots rocked her whole, her whole head, went like flying upward. Okay, nice, nice, okay. Should I go for like a hook, just didn't work. I said great counter strikers, they use those leg kicks to kind of create distance, or if not, at least, in, you know, put some pressure on their opponent. Nice shot to the body. Oh, this is not looking good for her. Oh, oh! She got, if she was in that corner, it would have been over. If she did not get out of that corner, I guarantee you that would have been the end of the fight. I think the, the, the barrage would, would have just been too much. Now, Rose's leg is starting to give way. This is not good either. Oh, she didn't even check that one. Oh, that was nasty. And that was a sloppy kick, too. Oh, 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 that's not good. Because if she can't stand, she can't fight. This would be a technical knockout. And the first one from McGregor uh, MMA 2 to have like a leg kick uh, knockout. Oh, ooh. That was a nice round. I said it's it's funny. It's like when you get jujitsu specialists and force them out of their comfort zone, it makes for an interesting fight because you really just don't know what's going to happen. Ready? They can't Let's rely on that wrestling. So I'm pretty sure who's going to knock who out, or are we going to a decision? That night, that again, that head kick didn't look like it completely landed right out right where she wanted it to. So that's why she, I think she got up so quickly. Oh, goodness gracious. It was a nice upcut that dropped Arujo. So both fighters again been, oh! The legs, the legs, we've talked about before the legs. We don't know how much more it's gonna take. You know what's funny though? Arujo's still been trying to go for that same shot and it's been red every time. I think she really exposed that that overhand right. It's, oh my god, that was flush in the face and she's still standing. What a fight. Oh, the leg. How, ref, you gotta... That leg eventually is gonna snap if she isn't... Oh! Oh, good god! Good night! Good night, Vivian Arujo! Alexa Burrell, a huge knockout in round number three. Both fighters who have made their debut so far with the knockout victories in convincing fashion. Look at Modified Superman Punch. Almost. Just the hook. And boom. Wow. Congrats to Vivian Arujo. Sorry, not the, to Alexa Biro, my apologies, who is victorious in her debut. As she's now one no, she puts Vivian Rujo to four and six. Next up, folks, it's going to be in the featherweight division. That's right, as the one in five Edson Barboza takes on the four and six Alexander Volkanovsky. Here we go. Barboza in the red, Volkanovsky in the black. If you're Barboza, leg kicks to worry about. Well, if you're oh, if you if you're Volkanovski, worry about leg kicks. If you're Barboza, worry about those hands. They're lethal.
Jones. That's a nice exchange here in that first opening minute. We actually update the last sign of the records. Vivian Ahuho, four and six. Mexico. One and up. We love to see newcomers come in with good records. Anyway. To actually both these fighters again kind of shakingly being getting a feel for that was a nice head kick though oh, that dropped that dropped barboza and again barboza kind of needs to get away from the cage that's smart see what he did there that was very smart He's got to find... Uh, he's not really... I, I don't think getting into an exchange with a guy like Alexander Volkov is very helpful. He needs to try to create distance. Uh, change the tempo. It's been Volkanovski pushing up the tempo. And with that, once he can change the tempo of this thing, start using those leg kicks. Use them decisively. We all know how dangerous they are. He's very lucky Volkanovski went for a body shot as that hit in the face and that would have knocked him out flush. Looking for, so you can see both guys are waiting for that knockout shot. They, they're both these guys have done a great job. This has been a feel out process for both of them for sure. But what we're seeing though, Volkanovski has gotten the better of Barboza in a lot of these a, a lot of these uh, encounters. Oh, again, it's those slick shots that you just don't see coming. Oh, oh, oh! Hello! Holy hell! Alexander Volkanovski with a slick. I can tell that was a jab, a hook, or or, or was it over? What was? It? And he came around with the yeah, came with the overhand. Well, that was wild. No, he actually hooked them. Yeah. Wow. Wowzers. Alexander Volkanovsky, five and six, in the UFC. Congrats to now being five and six, one step closer to five hundred, as he makes Edson Barboza go one and six. So not looking good for Edson, but that was a pretty interesting round. Volkanovski waited for the opportunity, found the opportunity, took advantage of it. Can't really hate that, to be honest. Next up, that's right, we are going to the women's straw weight division. As the are you ready? 10 and 12, Yoana Yo Jack, in the red, by the way, takes on the 6 and 8 Yoana, sorry, Yoana, the 6 and 8 Tatiana Suarez. It's right here tonight. And this will make update the records for that last fight. Right. There's a poor Edson going one and six now. He's not. He's just definitely not having a great record time. Oh, that was a nice shot. Perfect and all up to date. Love that. So I feel like we've actually got less engagement in this uh, in this episode. I feel like you know the, the fighters were, like were very much so like down. You know, like I said, the last two times we had this, they were up in each other's faces, going to war. Not saying that they, that these fighters haven't, you know, in terms of the ones that have gone yet, but definitely a different uh, pace, different style. But also when you don't have, you know, boxers in all the time, it's definitely going to be that way. A lot more fighters are more calculated and will take time. So both fighters said just getting to feel out, feel each other out. 
That was a nice shot to the body. So for if in our main events, by the way, it's going to be in the lightweight division as the Donald Cerrone himself, 6 and 10, by the way, goes against the 4 and 5 Tony Ferguson. This is a huge, huge main event. Happens right here tonight, lightweight division. I'm super ecstatic for this one. I mean, we also get to see Kamara Usman go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mike Mallett. Up down goes Suarez. Uh, Jolton um, Almeida makes his debut against Cain Glass, which would be a good one. And not to mention, Drickus Duplessis takes on Paulo Costa. Well, I feel like many would like to see that in the middleweight division in real life. And we're going to see it right here tonight. What is going to be an action-packed episode of fights. It's the Taurus MMA. As it should be. Not to mention, Ta Tasha Hayes makes her turn to take on Misha Tate later on tonight. Tim Malley takes on TJ Dillashaw. And Israel Adesanya takes on Magomed Ankalev. So there's a lot of different uh, style of fights that can be happening. I think that we have got some really interesting styles that don't necessarily, I guess, fit for this type of environment. That's the best way. For this type of rule set, you know, stand and bang. And it's going to really test who's got the hands and who doesn't. You no, know, great, you can wrestle, but can you punch? It's not just all about wrestling. So, I, I, I'm intrigued for it. Ready? Here we go. Especially, especially coming after a very intense UFC 298 pay-per-view. Where, where history was made. I don't know why I keep you on. I think it's the gym. I gotta stop going to the gym before I start streaming. I, I, when I tell you, I, I'd be like doing these streams. And I'd just be like just so tired. I, I don't get it. Well, then I actually do great. I've been starting to do like the whole progressive overload stuff. And man, when I tell you, when I tell you, progressive overload has been kicking my behind, folks. It really, it really do. Nice head kick, though. Oh. Oh, that leg, not that's not good for you, Anna. She can't have those type of issues coming out this early. I know eventually I've got to post the rankings again. I think we'll do it after we hit UFC 300 just because we can, from that point forward, we we should be good to, to post it. It'll be fresh. So we haven't posted since we started. Oh, look at this. Suarez is kind of staggering. Not to you wonder J. Jackson knows has been cut and it's just been gashing at this point. That was a nice shot. Again. It's funny, like both fighters are pulling off each other once they kind of get things going. So it's interesting to see exactly they're not really following up with these combinations. There we go, finally, at least a two piece. You can tell, coach trying to tell you wanted to go finish Tatiana Suarez. Oh! Holy moly. That is how you can definitely answer back. That almost knocked out um, jo 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 Joanna completely. Nice shot again. Tatiana trying to hang in there, avoid, you know, at least hang in and somehow find a way out of this. this oh, good night! Knocked her out on the way down. Yoanio J. Jack not playing here tonight. Took the opportunity, finished the combination, and instead of waiting for her to drop, she hit her again. Whew, that hook, that the hook definitely dropped there. Yoanio J. Jack knocks out Tatiana Suarez within the final minute of round number two. Wowzers. Yoana Yo J Jack, 11 and 12 in the UFC. Tatiana Suarez, 6 and 9.
Next up, folks, it's going to be in the light heavyweight division. That is right. As our featured prelim bout is going to be in a light heavyweight contest as the 7-8 Israel Adesanya takes on the 0-2 Magomed Anklev. Adesanya in the red, Anklev in the black. Here we go. Izzy's pushing the pace early. It's like a change of what we've seen in the first four, throughout four fights. Okay, let's me just update here. Ted Anklev looking for his first win in the in, in the UFC, you know, in terms of May era's been 0-2, you know, in his two fights. Definitely looking for a change of scenery, but Adesanya determined to go 8-8. Eight eight, determined to finally be 500. This is his opportunity to do so. I'm very glad Anklev said that. It was an early night for him, that's for sure. Oh, down goes Anklev. 11-12. Suarez, 6-9. Anklev doing his best to hang in there. As a strong shot, not looking too good. Bozo is correct. I like double check. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. I'm up to date. We love that. Said both fighters said, is he? Oh, that is how you answer back. That was a rocking shot. Is he's got a pretty good chin. That's what people don't realize. Is he's got a really good chin, and he takes a lot of shots. People just think, oh, he doesn't. Now, is he's taking some nasty shots before? Well, people, I feel like, don't put enough respect on Israel uh, on Izzy's name. I get that he's got some, like, I guess he likes anime. And people don't like that, but it is what it is. Like, who cares? The dude's a great fighter, great athlete. Nice, nice. But speaking about chins, Anklev's got a great chin too. These are two bulls here that are just gonna actually try to wreck each other. My goodness. Oh, that leg I think just cracked. Not good for oh, they're not good for Uncle Liv at all. We're going to round number two. I said round number one for me definitely goes to Izzy. Izzy dominated. There is no doubt about that. So it's not looking good. I said, you know, what we have seen in the history of this series, we got a lot of history in this thing, is that once the leg starts to mess up, a fighter normally does not win that fight. Uh-oh, I think we're seeing that here. Enclave is not doing so hot right now. Just got to weather the storm. Oh, he's lucky that he didn't have a second punch. I think he would have been out of it. Ah, oh, that leg again. Got to be very careful, Uncle Liv. Nice shot. So Uncle Liv kind of, he's tagging, but he's not doing a lot of, there we go, that's what he needed, an impactful shot, a significant strike, and he got it. That, that was a straight jab that absolutely rocked him. He's lucky that that first hit didn't land. I think it would have been over. So I'm telling you, I think the next big significant strike on Anklo is going to drop him and knock him out. 
As for Adesanya, I think he's got a couple more strikes to take. Oh, oh, the double whammy. Kicked the leg and punched him in the face. Uncle's got to be careful. Rajasthan did not like that kick to the body. Oh! Good night, Magomed Ankalev. Israel Adesanya picks up the victory here tonight. He is now 8-8, eight and eight, 500 for, I think, the first time in ages. As he puts Magomed Ankalev to 0-3, the man just can't buy a win. Poor guy. Like he, seriously, like he, he legit just cannot buy a win to save his life. Like it's 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 unfortunate for him. Next up, folks, we're gonna be heading to the women's bantam weight division. That's right, women's bantam weight division. As we see the return of Tasha Hayes, who's two and three, taking on nine and twelve former champ Misha Tate. Tate in the black trunks, and Hayes in the white trunks. Let's see who walks away the winner in this one. To update the fights and the records. Misha Tate going all out here, trying to drop Tasha Hayes early. That drop early is not a great sign for Tasha, but as we've seen, Tasha she knows how to kind of weather the, weather the storm, and I'm I'm not too concerned. I, I think Tasha may have this. She's definitely going against one hell of a veteran and someone who's found success before. So, granted, I think when people look at Misha Tate in our series, they're like, oh, she's not any good, and she has actually. She shocked people quite. Oh, down. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, she shocked everyone quite a few times. So, don't count Misha Tate out. But at the same time, the same story can kind of be said for Tasha Hayes. Don't count her out just yet. Especially when you think she's done, she finds a way. It is her quickness that is definitely going to be to her advantage. It's a wonderful shot there. This is not looking good for Tasha, though. Oh, there you go. That's exactly what she did. But she's trying to drop Misha Tate. If you can drop Misha Tate early, that's going to put some real confidence in Tasha Hayes, for sure. That means her, shot, her shots, her strikes, they're doing damage. And significant damage, too. It seems to be her best opportunities are when she's counter-striking. That may need to be the, the game plan for her here. Oh, the leg again with the legs just keep breaking tonight. Oh my god, the uppercut from from this of the century, Jesus. That one was just Oh, oh! Oh my god, that was nasty. Misha Tate with an emphatic knockout victory here tonight in round number one. Well, you want to talk about destructive. Holy moly. Misha Tate, 10 and 12 in the UFC, I believe now. Yeah, 10 and 12 in the UFC. She puts Tasha Hayes to 2 and 4. That was a na I mean, the body folds so far, that is easily knockout of the night. By far, it might be going to Misha Tate. Because my word, that was as nasty and as vicious as it gets.
Next up, it's going to be in the welterweight division. That's right. As the Kamara, I don't think Kamara has held a title. I think, I think, I think he has. I think he has. Anyway, as Kamara Usman, who's seven and ten, takes on the debuting Mike Mallet. This should be interesting. Mallet in the black trunks, Usman in the red trunks. Wait, why does that not look like Kamara Usman from the side? Who? Who rendered Kamara Usman? That is not Kamara Usman. There is no way you're gonna tell me that's Kamara Usman. That don't even look like Kamara Usman. That looks like Philip Usman. <laughs> What is this? Like, why is he not even looking? Like, he looks like he's always squinting. Like, he, he has, like, a vision problem. There is no way they, 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 there's, there's no way. No. No. I, I, I have a, I, I don't know who this fighter is. This is not Kamar Usman. Like, his face does not look anything like they got the beard. I, I, I would... Oh, my God. That was nasty. But they, they got... they. This is just... No. No. Like, the... the Everything, like, head down is fine. Like, n neck down is fine. But the face, it looks like they aged him by, like, 50. Like, I think he's only, like, 38, 36. And he looks like he's 74 here. I can't believe this. And yes, I, I'm I'm not over this. This is that that's that's no. All right, so light heavyweights. Nisha Tate. Who's man getting rocked from Malap? I mean, Malap's taking a beating too. Let's not forget that he's been dropped twice to heavy hands. Yep, I was right. Kamar Usman has been a former champion for us. Uh-oh. Usman could be in some trouble. So I think even still, like, Usman just kind of... I'd say, I'd say that Usman was the better striker for the majority of that round. Think about it. Boom. Drop them here. I, I, I thought that's what they're probably going to show, too. <laughs> Are you ready? Come on. Probably Usman's going to tell them to the game. Uh-oh. Usman right now in some trouble. Yeah, obviously that, that little uh, head kick thing. Probably not going to work. Usman knows how to adapt it and just pretty well in, in between rounds. My mouth is a mess. That's like Usman. It looks like Usman's got a messed up nose. Not even looks. He does have a messed up nose right now. I was about to say, oh, oh, wait. He's, oh, he... Well, oh, temporary. He, he dropped him. That that does count. Why is that judge look so angry? Oh, Mike Mount might actually be able to do this, or maybe not. When a straight jab takes down like that. That's definitely got to do with, with the man's power, but also means that that chin is weakening. Now, what's that? Mallet's actually gotten the better of Uzman in this round. Oh, 
Oh. So it's these single jabs that are starting to drop Mount, which really makes me think Mount may be on, on the, uh, maybe uh, close to getting knocked out here. Oh, that was an overhand that laid in to Mike. Oh, good night, Jesus. Good, good Lord, good Lord. His body kept spazzing for like four or five seconds. Oh, I guess it kind of does look like Kamaru. I, I no, I can't. I, it, 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 no, no. It looks like he was 22 now. Like when you see it straight wise, it looks 22. When you see it from the side, it looks like he's 50. Anyway, congrats to Kamar Usman on winning this fight. He is now eight and ten in the UFC. He puts Mike Mallet to 0 and 1. And next up, folks, it's going to be a heavyweight collision for the ages. And it's funny because normally the heavyweight's main event, our um, in Taurus MMA, for the first time they will not be lightweights. So to see them this early is kind of interesting. Zhao Tanami making his debut against the 3 and 8 Kane Velasquez. Wonder what's going to happen here. Oh, Johnson ate that one pretty bad. Oh, down goes Johnson. Mallet on one. This is updated perfection. I mean, I did not want his debut to go at bad. The first two we had went well. And then after that, the other two have been unsuccessful. Oh, the leg of Velasquez. Not looking good here for Kane. Oh, look, he tried to go for a stiff elbow. It just didn't work out for him very well. Again, solid shot to the body. Very interesting to kind of see what each coach has. Oh. oh. The Jalton's kind of, it looks a little bit scared. Let's leave the body. That look that that went way low, Kane. And I mean way low, like him and then the yams. So both fighters kind of just standing still. Okay, there we go. It's like, it's like both fighters kind of catching their breath a little bit after being an engaged heavyweights known for being fast knockout artists. We're not really seeing that here. Oh! That was another clunky shot right to the side of the jaw. He's very lucky that spinning back. Oh, that leg again. Can't think he's looking to go for that up here. You can tell he wants it. We're going to round number two, and that was that was a tough one because like when you look at it. I don't know how much damage has been done to the leg of Kane, but it's also hard to say how much damage has been done to the jaw of Johnson because Johnson got popped quite often in that. Oof, he's very lucky that Kane could connect all that. He's getting back up there. He recovered quickly. That was good for Jow. Oof, nice uppercut. Can he drop the big man Kane Velasquez? 
Nice uppercut. Oh, oh. now uh, no, Jonathan's legs doing just fine, kind of. Oh, it's a bit stiff, too. Uh, Jonathan's legs a bit stiff, but Kane took a little bit of a beating there. This is getting to be pretty interesting. It's like kind of like the Battle of Wills. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how much it's hard to assess the damage that's been done. When both of these guys are kind of cold. Well, for Jonathan, he collapsed pretty bad. I don't know how much more he can take. And the body kind of like left his soul for well, his soul left his body for a moment. Oh, that's right. Oh my god. Wow. His whole body just like, ooh. Oof, that was rough. Kane Velasquez gets a major knockout here tonight. He knocks out Jolson Almeida in round number two. Kane Velasquez now 4 and 8 in the UFC. Jolson Almeida 0 and 1. Check this out, folks, one more time. Just a devastating knockout. And folks, we're going to head to the men's flyweight division. But first, like I said, Jolton all made it 0-1. Kane Velasquez, 4-8. and eight. Here you go. Men's flyweight division action as the 6-8... 6 and eight, six, or six and eight, As the 6-10, and 10, Tim Elliott takes on the 10-13, and 13, TJ Dillashaw. Love having hiccups. That was rough. Uh, like it literally stopped me in mid sentence. TJ Dillashaw, that was terrible. Uh, anyway, ten thirteen for TJ Dillashaw. Uh, this is going to be in the black trunks. Tim Elliott in the red trunks. Here we go. Going to update the last fight. How many times you tell the guy cover up? Jesus, cover up, cover up, cover up. Keep moving, cover up. I'm like, all right, we got you. Let's see Kane win a fight. I feel like it's been ages since I've seen him win a fight. Anyway, here we go. Uh oh. Dillard Shaw not looking too hot. There's a nice shot. I said, Tim likes to pick people apart. Um, TJ Joseph is going to have his hands full with him here. It's not ever really an easy time in the office when you have to deal with Tim Elliott. Nice hook. Okay, TJ, we see you. Nice front kick. The both fast guys said that was an awkward mode. They just kind of like stood there and was like, uh, what are they gonna do? It was blocked anyway. <laughs> Ooh, almost see two piece them. Okay. So nothing major to note so far about these two. They've been it's it's been pretty balanced. Not much has really happened on either side. They're both trying to make a decent impact, trying to get a, you know an edge over the other, but they're both pretty evenly matched. Yeah, well, you can't really get the takedown there, so I'm trying to takedowns in this fight. So, giving your fighter really bad instructions. Oh! I literally yawned. I don't know why I'm so tired today, my goodness. I literally closed my eyes for like a second. 
And TJ Dillashaw just knocks out Tim Elliott. Straight up punch. Like, no, no, uh, no nothing. Straight up punch. Knocks out Tim Elliott. And the fight's over in the first round. Goodness gracious. TJ Dillashaw, 11 and 13. Tim Elliott, 6 and 11. Let's folks, we go on to the next fight, which is going to be in the middleweight division. That's right. What's up next? So we're going to see the one and only. This uh, To me, this fight is honestly a dream fight. I feel like... Ready to go? I feel like it, it, this would be an amazing fight. Like, seriously, I think this would be an amazing fight if this were to happen in, in real life. But it's going to be Drickus Duplessis 1 and 2 in the red trunks taking on the 2 and 5 Polo Costa in the black trunks. This fight could go 3 rounds or it can go in 1. By the way, something tells me we're definitely going to be getting a finish. Going on to the middleweights that are there. That was a nice one. Uh oh, Jesus, jeez, Louise. Trickus came to win tonight. Gotta think, if Trickus wins, it's was huge for Trickus. He goes two and two. But for Paul, it goes two and six. And in a fight that really should be his specialty, immense power. He may lose to a guy. Oh my goodness. Paulo. What did you say? Taste the blood? What is wrong with the people in the WFA crowd to Reno? Oh! Goodness me! It is over. Drickus Duplessis knocks out Polo Costa in round number one. Wowzers. I mean, this was a, a devastating shot. Polo went down and went down hard. There's no doubt about that. But next up, folks... It's main event time. It's the fight everyone wants to see. Donald Cerrone, Tony Ferguson. Headline, Notorious MMA 3. That's right. It happens right here, right now. And what is definitely going to be an epic fight. So, Donald Cerrone, 6 and 10 in the red trunks. Tony Ferguson, 4 and 5 in the black trunks. Here we go. Lightweight division fight. Main event gets no bigger than this. So Conor, Conor McGregor's a choice that made, puts on the best main events, the best fights they can possibly book. And they've kept that going here tonight with the epic fight between Donald Cerrone and Tony Ferguson. Now it's been a, a pretty solid show, I must say. <clears throat> I'm definitely surprised at how well the show is going. Oh, down goes Cerrone. So I'm definitely surprised with how well... Um, you guys have kind of received the Notorious MMA thing. I didn't know how well it was going to go. But you guys have so far enjoyed it. So as long as we just keep it, I think we'll keep the Notorious MMA to replace UFC Underground. I mean, that's what it was meant for, but I didn't know how long it was going to last. And you guys seem to really like it, so definitely we'll... Uh... Oh my god, Sarn is already struggling. But yeah, I think you guys are really into it, so that's awesome. The Tony Ferguson is a guy who loves to go. Same thing with Don Cerrone. Ooh. Oh, that was a nice little kick there. Oh, I think he's trying to go for like a spinning back fist. I'm not really sure what he tried to go for. It was weird. Let me check that leg kick. Okay. 
acid, but I think what happened, they, these two might have emptied their gas tanks, honestly, in the first couple of minutes. And that's what it, I mean, at least that's what it seems like. I, I, I could be completely wrong in that. Uh-oh. The leg snapped. That's not good. That is definitely not good at all. So for me, it seems like that Tony Ferguson is more so just kind of swinging to swing. He's just, yeah, Cerny's just kind of blocking everything. Uh-oh. For, for Ferguson got rocked. I think he actually got cut in the side of the head. That's like a blood vessel. Oh, oh! Whew, what an overhand. Wow, that was one heck of a round. As we go on to round number two, here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> both guys touch gloves, respect their show for both of them. Tony, we know, is definitely a guy who bleeds a lot in his fights, expecting no nothing different here tonight. Oh, Cerrone got rocked. Oh! Ferguson's gotta be careful. Tony's gotta be careful. Nice uppercut. <clears throat> well, he may have him on the ropes, but it's... It's looking kind of grim. Oh, goodness me. But Tony's hanging in there, though. Like, he's taking a beat, but he's hanging in there. That's exactly what I expected in this fight. Tony Ferguson to hang in there and take a beating. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what's wrong. Like, yeah! I'm like, all right, dude, we hear in the crowd. It's okay. So these guys, so these guys have torn each other apart. Oh, it's him in the body. Okay. Here's the thing. One thing that, that Tony First has done a really great job of is not being dropped. He's taken a beating. There's no doubt about it. But he has not been dropped. He has to hit the body again. Oh, oh, the body. And now I think Tony's going to change focus. Or oh, if he can get it. I said Tony's, his whole game plan, it's worked. But he's taking a beating in the process. And it's getting a little bit concerned. Oh! It's a nice uppercut. We well, double tapped him there, too. That's not good. Tony needs to be careful. He's trying to hang on to round number three. Yeah, he's got him hurt. Right? Both these guys are hurt. <laughs> oh, the head kick. As we're going to the third round of this fight. My goodness, what a war. Round number three of what's been an absolute battle between these two. I mean, it's been literally not, it hasn't been for the faint of heart, that, that's for sure. And we're seeing that here. Oh, down goes Ferguson. I, I don't know how Tony's hanging in there. Then yeah, the same can be said for Cerrone, but his face hasn't taken as much of a beating 
As Tony's had some more shows. Oh, good night, Jesus. Good night, Tony Ferguson. Donald Cerrone knocks out Tony Ferguson in round number three of the main event fight. Donald Cerrone. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Donald Cerrone does it again. He is now 7-10 in the UFC. My goodness. Wow. Congrats to Donald Cerrone winning the main event here tonight. And you know what that means, folks. We've got one more part of this stream left. And that is the awards. And... Well, that's actually... Yeah, the awards. <laughs> I don't know why I said and. Anyway, the awards. And so, they said, to me, knock on the night goes to one person. Definitively. Misha Tate. She earned it. Now, his performance of the night, uh, for Friday of the night, would have to be the main event, Donald Trump and Tony Ferguson. We all knew that was going to happen. Hey, anyway, folks, thank you guys so much for watching. Please do leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the BVTV channel. We will see you all next time, next week, for another fight night. Peace out, everybody. Subscribe and stay off the hook.